Hello everyone, and welcome to my last Let's Play for the Thief series. Well, at least for the main games. I'll probably still be doing the fan missions here and there, see if I can do some of the ones that haven't been done yet, and uh, do some of the ones that I, I just plain love, because there's been plenty of fan missions that have come close to being better than the actual game. So, what are we playing this, this time? It says Thief the Minimalist Age, but that's not what this is. This is Thief Deadly Shadows. And... It has an attract mode for some odd reason. Yes. Don't ask me why. Um, this game was actually developed alongside DOS X Invisible War, which... Thank you, we'll get to you in a second, Thief. Which... They were both developed for consoles. At the time, it was the original Xbox and the PS2. And it's as bad as it sounds. All the textures are huge. The control scheme is simplified. In Thief, they made a third-person view mode, which doesn't make any sense when the billing line for the original Thief was that it was a first-person sneaker. Thief, knock it off. I'm talking about you. You need to stay on the first screen. But anyways, since it's probably going to keep going into the attract mode, we might as well get on with this, and you can see what I think of this game. So, let's start a new game. I got a tip last night from my fence. Heartless Perry. A nobleman named Lord Julian had some sort of quarrel and showed up at a local inn well after nightfall and in a foul mood. He's carrying a velvet bag about the size of a man's fist and it never leaves his sight. Sounds likely to be valuable, but I'll know for sure when I steal it from him. Perry sent over a floor plan of the place the Blue Heron Inn. Finding his lordship won't be hard. His room number will be in the guest register, if I can get to the front desk to read it. The inn will have guards, but not as many as a private estate. That should make things easy, which is one of the reasons I'm willing to try it without knowing for sure what the take will be. Lord Julian is so protective of that bag. There's got to be something of value in it. And here's our first change. There's no intro movie into the mission it just starts luckily it's with Garrett talking which isn't such a bad thing but it feels contrived it feels I don't know it feels like a console game to me where it's this is the level this is the next level this is the next level uh, it might just be that you know I'm kind of biased towards this and Thief 2 is such such a huge game I loved it so much. But anyways, what are our goals exactly? Garrett already told us, but we still have our objectives menu. We're going to break into the end, find out what room Lord Julius is staying in, steal Lord Julius's velvet bag from his room, and leave, just like always. Now, you, you can see that this is all black back here, and even the menu in the beginning was different. That's because I'm using, as the title suggested, the minimalist mod, as well as a few other tweaks, which I will leave everything that I use down below. Um, it's definitely hard to get this game, well, it's playable by itself, but it's not enjoyable. This way, it's more reminiscent of the earlier Thieves. This way I can actually get you guys a widescreen view and um, a high texture pack on this as well. Well, this is a training mission. Ugh. I like the original's training mission better. It still plopped you into it like this, but it didn't stop you every 10 seconds to tell you what was going on. Hello, guard. To be a thief, you must be patient and learn to use the environment to your advantage. When you hide in shadows, guards will not be able to see you unless they are very close. The light gem at the bottom of the screen will tell you how visible you are. Crouching, moving slowly, and hiding behind objects can also be helpful. In this case, the guard will not see you if you remain in the darkness. Sneak past this guard to proceed to the next objective. Was that moving? Did, was... Did you see something, or were you asking if moving was False a thing? False alarm. Yeah, I guess. Now, the textures in this would be even better, but the way this is designed, it's kind of hard to mod for. Which, that didn't stop the modding community, because there are fan missions for this. Some guards will be on patrol, looking for intruders. You must learn to observe your enemies and use careful timing to slip by them while their backs are turned. Sneak past this patrolling guard without getting caught. 
quite simple enough. As you can see, I'm not really paying too much attention to the sounds that I'm making because some of the AI in this is brain dead. Come through. Training successful. The sounds you make can alert guards, so you must learn to move quietly. Your footsteps are louder when you run and when you cross over loud surfaces such as metal. Walking slowly will not ensure safe passage over the metal surface. It requires timing. If you have patience, you may press control to crouch and sneak by without alerting the nearby guard. Patience? I don't have anything like patience. And no need for stutter stepping here because as long as you're crouching, you're fine. You always have an objective. Your first objective is to break into the inn. When you are inside, press control again to stand up. Well, thank you. I've never played a first-person shooter before. Let's close this behind us. And uh, let's uh, avoid the barrels. You can use some objects by positioning them in the center of your screen. When they highlight, press the right mouse button to use them. Use the door to open it and proceed into the next room. Okay. Originally, these were these highlights here were a very garish blue, which I removed with the minimalist project thank you to all the modders who have made this game playable thank you so much because the story isn't too bad it's not as good as the first two but it's not too bad so now we're going to extinguish a, uh, a light source let's see if I can even remember uh, what's the preset for the water arrow wow that's pretty low on the old Totem pole there. Uh, hello. I can't bring it up. Why can't I bring it up? What's going on? Ow. Okay, we're back. Uh, for some odd reason, the uh, ready weapon button, which I zero is what I use because I have a special mouse, um, unbound itself. I don't know why. Come on. And actually, now that I think about it, that's wrong too. But anyways, I'll go back and change that in between recordings. Um, another thing I found out is you can't change any options without quitting to the main menu, which was fun to say the least. To climb on top of obstacles, get close to them, and press space. Climb over these boxes to proceed. I can do that. Wee. Wee. I said. Hello. Garrett. And I'm floating. Oh, maybe I can fall off this ledge and it will reset it. Can I fall off this ledge? Okay, there we go. That happens sometimes, one of the many bugs. Thank you. Oh, I failed because you bugged out? Thank you very much, game. <sighs> this is going to be fun, isn't it? You see the shadows are very blue. That's kind of the default color for this. A locked door is no obstacle for a skilled thief. Use the door with the right mouse button to enter lock picking mode. Then use the mouse to pick the lock. You must find the sweet spot in each stage to make progress. Note any movement on the lock to gauge the location of the sweet spot. There will be a visual clue when you find the sweet spot. Click the left mouse button to release the tumbler. Pick open this lock to proceed through the door. Again, this was a design for consoles, because on consoles you have two sticks. Oops, you have two sticks, and you have vibration. You do not have that on a mouse. Come on, there you are. So, this is not a good lockpicking scheme. The 20... Damn it. 2014 Thief is actually a good lockpicking scheme I quite like. A locked door is no obstacle for a skilled thief. I just read this. Why am I reading it again? Oh, game. You would be the death of me. Hello. Hi. You must learn to ambush your opponents. One hit from the blackjack can take down an opponent silently. Silence, his ultimate, silence is the ultimate weapon. To blackjack 
successfully. You must strike from behind when your opponent is not aware of your presence. Select your blackjack and sneak up on the innkeeper and knock him out. Sounds good to me. All right. And... Gotcha. Uh, come here. If you leave bodies around, they might get noticed. Highlight a body by centering on the screen, then press the right mouse button to pick up the body. Find a clear area to drop the body, then press the right mouse button again to drop it. Pick up the innkeeper, then hide his body in the ladder room you just came from. Okay, if you say so. Actually, uh-uh. Oh, come on, Garrett. You tell me, uh-uh. Your second objective is to locate Lord Julian. See if you can find a clue that will guide him to guide you to his location. What is this? Go away, training. Front desk. Yes, I, I didn't know that. I can't pinch out the candle? Well, you suck. Guest list, Lord Julian. The Peony suite. Uh, the Earl of Warwick and friend and friends. Ho ho ho. Cotillona suite. Alysis Griggs, Dune Room. God, that name is Dune Room. Baronet Mowbray and Companion. Oh, right. Cabaret Suite. Dame Jala. I wonder if that's a whole name or if that's a woman. And Companion. Crystal Suite. Hayforth MacDougall. Bungalow Room. All right. Master Vor Vorig and Apprentice. Oh, whoa. City View Room. Oh, really? You're going to do that in full view of the city? Wow. Lord Pockrates. Ugh, names. Wisteria Room. Well, I don't need any of that. Except for the very first one. Lord Julian. <laughs> Wouldn't do to have anyone think he was just Julian. Or just Bob. It'd be better to be Lord Bob. King Bob, no doubt. Got a new note. Don't care. Hello, kitty. Hey, it's a cat that's not in a cage. What a concept. Animals that aren't in cages. Hmm. Check your map to find out where Lord, Julian ro Lord Julian's room is. It's always a good idea to check your map when you're... Uh, whatever, I don't care. You know, this is getting old fast. So, see? Map. This is a map. Map is a map. Don't use them. Well, at least I don't. These are small levels anyway. An observant thief keeps an eye out for valuable items, such as this goblet. You will need a keen eye to know which items are valuable and which are not. The items you can you steal can later be sold to your fence for cash. Highlight the goblet and pick it up. This is actually one thing I do like about this game, is you actually get to sell your loot, which is just wonderful. You can press up against the wall to decrease your visibility in the light gem and to fit in narrow shadows. To enter wall flattening mode, stand very close to a wall and press R. To exit, press R. Practice, okay. There we go. Not bad, not as useful as a swoop technique though, honestly. And I jumped on accident. Dang it, I'm floating again. See, see, that's my body. Uh, some places you just aren't supposed to jump. Okay, how am I going to reset you, Garrett? I'm gonna have to fall off the ladder. I'm gonna have to fall off the ladder, aren't I? Oh, is this fun to watch? This must be fun to watch. Wee! There we go. I reset it. That is such a stupid bug. How did it ever ship with that? It doesn't make any sense. Now I'm starting to realize why the uh, 2014 thief decided to make it so you couldn't jump wherever. Maybe they had the same problem and just wanted to disable it. Regardless, we're moving on. Doesn't seem like there's any guards around. Except right there. That's the door to Lord Julian's room, but the guard's in the way. Get him away from the door. Find the best way to distract him. Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Trying to read. There we go. Fiona sweet, sweet. Yeah, I can't read. Can I just kill him? Yeah, I got him. Uh, 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 no, no, he's making her. There we go. Well, I guess I... Ha! Ah! Kind what of... was that? What's that racket? It's a noise. All right. Simple enough. Not everything you pick up will be useful or valuable. The item you just picked up is garbage. Drop it. Uh, yeah. 
on that note, is that one valuable? That one's not valuable either. Lord Julian isn't here in his room, and neither is the velvet bag you're trying to steal. Find a clue which tells you where he has gone, and your objective will update with a new location. You can always use O to view the, your objectives. For important information on how to complete them, use the scroll bar to see notes and restrictions below your objectives. Oh, that sounds just peachy. Well, on that and the uh, junk message, I'll have to leave it here. This has been an eventful first episode, and I don't mean it in a good way, seeing how it's, a, it's the only the training mission. I can get through this game without it completely bugging out on me. But, anyways, it is worth sticking around because there is one great level in this entire game, and the story isn't half bad. I quite enjoyed it. So, with that, I will see you in the next episode.